Uh, good day everyone, this is Engineer Freedom Karodan. So for today's video, as you can see from the title and uh, thumbnail, it is about uh, RC design for footing. Okay, so ayan, uh, let's start. Throughout the ages, builders and laymen realized that uh, the importance of building structure on a strong foundation. Okay, physically, Soil is a material weaker than other common materials of uh, construction such as steel, concrete, and wood. However, for this material to carry load satisfactorily, uh, a greater area of volume of soil is necessarily required. Loads that are being carried by steel, concrete, and wood had to be transmitted to the ground, but it needs a transfer device called foundation. Okay, And then foundation has its purpose. It is to transmit the collective building load to the soil in such way that the supporting soil will not be overstressed or overloaded and will not undergo deformation that may cause serious building settlement. Okay? So, a structural foundation per, uh, that performs properly only if the supporting soil behaves properly. So, building support is provided by a soil foundation system which is an inseparable combination. Okay. Considering the soil foundation system is responsible for providing support for the lifetime of a building, all forces that may act over time uh, must be considered. For a, uh, for a building to last, its foundation must be designed for the worst conditions that may develop. Okay. <clears throat> so we have here, so what is footing and what is foundation? And what is the difference between footing and foundation? So, foundation is a structure which transfers the load from the superstructure to the ground, while footing is the foundation which is in, in contact with the earth. A foundation can be shallow or deep, while footing is a type of shallow foundation. So, all footings are foundations, but all foundations cannot be footings. Okay? So, ayan yung differ uh, difference ng footing from foundation. Okay? So, footings are structural members used to support columns or walls and transmit their loads to the underlying soils. So, since the bearing capacity is normally low, usually it is less than 400 kPa. And the load from a column or wall is large, usually greater than 1000 kPa. So, when we design for the uh, bending moment, we use the... Uh, strength reduction factor of 0 0.90 because uh, the, it is usually greater than 1000 kilopascal. So we use 1000 kilopascal because it uh, gives us the steel strain of 0 0.005. Okay, the footing therefore spreads the column or, or wall pressure to the soil by providing bigger bearing area, thus reducing the bearing pressure within permissible values. <clears throat> so uh, foundations are grouped into two broad categories. We have the shallow foundation and the deep foundation. So, <clears throat> so we have these types of footing under uh, shallow foundation. We have a wall footing. So it looks like this. Okay. So if we, uh, it's a uh, figure nata. Okay. And then we have uh, isolated or single column footing, or what we call the spread footing. So when I say spread footing, it is a typically a plain or RC uh, uh, reinforced concrete. Okay? So basically, it is a pad used to spread out from the word spread footing. So spread out building column and wall load over a sufficiently large uh, soil area. Okay? So another type of footing is the combined footing. Okay? So, combined footing is a combination of two or more uh, columns. So, yun lang. And then, we have a mat or rough foundation. So, as you can see sa figure, and then define natin siya. Also, mat or rough foundation, <clears throat> single thick mat or slab that supports the entire structure. So, from the word mat or rough, para siyang mat. Okay? So, meron tayong... Uh, so, meron na tayong... Yung foundation natin is a single... A uh, single slab na lang siya, okay? Na meron tayong more than a uh, group of columns or a strip of wall, okay? And, and then we have for the foundation, we have 
e piles, piers, and caissons. So here we see uh, we have piles, so pile caps, slabs that are reinforced concrete used to distribute column loads to group of piles. Okay, we'll discuss now. Then Load generation footing, according to code section for 15.3 meters, the base uh, are area of a footing and the number of piles shall be determined from an, uh, an unfactored forces and moments transmitted by footing. So, sorry sa typos. Okay. So, mani-discuss na lang natin yan. Next ko na lang. So, ito pala, discuss ko. So, in the design of, uh, the, in the, the analysis of and design of uh, footing okay. we have these three modes of failure we have the wide beam shear or what we call the one way shear so foundations in one way shear failure fails in an inclined crack across full width of the footing that intercept the bottom of the footing slab at a distance D from the day, uh, from the face of the column called critical section kaya siya tinawag na one way shear because we assume that the uh, uh, from the critical section uh, we only have uh, one failure section okay so magpe-fail siya sa isang section so one way shear and then we have punching shear or the two way shear also known as diagonal tension failure of foundation in this mode of failure foundation fails due to formation of inclined cracks around the perimeter of the column so sa punching shear we assume that the column will penetrate our footing therefore it creates a hole or ayun nga punching from the word punching binubutas nung column yung ating footing okay and then lastly we have the bending moment so the critical section for fle uh, flexure is considered at a d the uh, distance d from the face of the footing so it's either uh so magbabasa tayo sa NSCP code provisions so Basically, uh, or usually, it is fra uh, sa moment pala, uh, the critical section is mismo sa uh, face ng ating column. Okay? So, matatakil natin yun mamaya. So, before we proceed in the analysis and design of footing, let us uh, discuss muna what is uh, the soil bearing capacity, the unfactored loads, factored loads. So, yan. So, net, net bearing. Okay? Yan. So, gross and net pressure in footing. Okay? So, what is gross pressure? So, gross pressure is the total pressure at the base of the footing due to the applied column loads and footing self-weight plus overburden pressure above the footing. So, meron tayong, sabi dyan, is we have <coughs> the applied column loads. Okay? So, we have a ap applied column load here. Therefore, from the soil, so, ito is actually loaded. Ha? Okay. So, therefore, yung ating soil ay may mag, uh, magbabalik ng pressure dyan, which is uh, we call the... Uh, okay. So, meron tayong so, uh, soil bearing pressure dyan. And then, <coughs> we have the uh, pressure also. So, kapag gross pressure daw, meron din tayong loads and footing self weight plus overburden pressure. So meron din tayong weight na nanggagaling mismo sa concrete. Weight mismo na nanggagaling sa concrete and also the pressure from the uh, soil, okay? So yung combination nito is what we call the gross pressure. Okay? So QG or Q gross. Itong combination ng soil bearing uh, per, uh, pressure galing sa applied column loads and then the uh, overburden pressure okay so yan combination yan is our gross air, uh, gross pressure and then for net pressure naman it is the pressure due to column loads only so this uh, right here is what we call the q net or the net pressure okay yan so solving for the gross and net pressure so first we have this net pressure so net pressure is the pressure due to column loads therefore the pressure uh, na nanggagaling sa ito, ito. pressure na yan so, uh, yung load na yan is meron siyang ang ating soil may ibabalik na pressure so solving for this since pressure, uh, pressure yan the formula for pressure or stress is just equal to the uh, force over the area so ang force dyan is so, when we talk about the, uh, when we solve for the pressure, 
or uh, ayun, the, uh, dimensions, so hindi pa tayo nag-deal with modes of failure, we use unfactored load. So therefore, PC is just the combination of the uh, dead load and our live load. So total ng dead load and live load, PC. So PC stands for the pressure due to a uh, Uh, pressure due to column loads. Okay? And then, area of the footing. So, makikita natin sa uh, example natin that the area of the footing is equal to 3 by 3. Okay? So, therefore, that is equal to 127.78 kilo pascal. Okay? And then, for Okay, na solve natin yung net pressure. So, na solve natin for gross pressure, na solve natin yung applied column loads or yung net pressure. So, for gross pressure naman, meron pa tayong tinatawag na pressure due to the uh, self-weight of the footing and then the overburden pressure. It is the pressure due to the soil. So, solving for the uh, overburden pressure plus the pressure sa footing, therefore, it is the only the pressure due to the uh, due to soil and then pressure due to footing. Okay? So, when we solve for that one, for this example, so, pressure ng soil, we have, ito, so, the unit width of soil times the height of soil. And then, for the pressure sa footing, it is just the unit weight of concrete times the height of concrete. Okay? So, unit weight of concrete is 18. And then, height of soil is 1.2 plus 24 times 0.6 so ang overburden pressure natin is equal to 36 okay 36 therefore kapag pinag-add natin tong net pressure and the uh, overburden pressure we will get the cross pressure. Okay, so, 127.78 plus 36, that is 163.78. Okay? Kilo Pascal. Okay? So, yun natin gross. And then, for the design of a dimension of a footing, we must always uh Uh, set that the allowable pressure so yung allowable pressure must be uh, greater than or equal to the gross pressure so mali siguro so kapag nagde-design tayo for a uh, what you call the effective structure or a footing dapat lagi uh, allowable uh, soil pressure is greater than the uh, gross pressure kasi pag sinabi nating equal Medyo critical. Ayan yung tinatawag na critical na uh, structure. Okay? So, ayan. And then, as you can see here, in uh, naka-note dyan, in the design of concrete footing for shear and bending, use factor net pressure only. So, therefore, yung in the design for the modes of failure, we have to use the uh, factor uh, net pressure. So, kapag sinabi natin net, yung loads coming uh, from the column. Okay, so 1.2 sa NCP code provisions, that is 1.2 dead load plus 1.2 live load. Okay, so and solving for the ultimate bearing capacity naman, if there is no moment, it is just only force over area. So, yung force na gagamitin natin is the factored uh, force na. Okay, so PU over the area of the footing. Yan. Next. So, ayan. So, for the NSCP code provisions na gagamitin natin, so, factored loads is just 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 uh, live load. And then, for the strength reduction factors naman na gagamitin natin, ang uh, for shear, shear, uh, shear stress, we have 0.75 na strength reduction factor or fee. Okay? And then, for bearing, 0.65. And for flexure or bending moment, we have 0.90. Okay? So, As you can remember, uh, sa RC design naman for uh, RC design ninyo, past RC design, is we have when we, uh, for bending to, uh, bending. 
okay when our uh, fs is less than fy okay our strength reduction factor is 0 0.60 Mali, no, that is but 0 0.65 0 0.60 okay and then kapag naman uh, fs is greater than fy but less than 1000 megapascal we uh, we use the strength reduction factor that is greater than 0 0.65 but less than 0 0.90 okay so etong zone nat uh, etong uh, zone na to is what we call the compression control zone okay and then for this part we have the transition zone okay so fy is great uh, fs is greater than fy but less than 1000 megapascal again 1000 megapascal kasi ito yung magbibigay sa atin ng steel strain of 0 0.005 okay and then for when fs naman is greater than 1000 we use the strength reduction factor of 0 0.90 so ito yan Okay. So for footing, always remember that the uh, FS is always greater than 1000, malayo. Okay? So ang gagamitin natin lagi for strength reduction factor for bending sa footing is 0 0.90. So ito yung tension controlled na tinatawag. Okay? So mapuprove naman natin mamaya for uh, when we analyze or design for our footing. Okay? And the flash nugget. Okay, we have this problem number one or situation one. So we have a, a column that is 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters square. So square is supported by a 3 meters by 3 meters isolated spread footing whose F prime C is 21 megapascal and is reinforced with 12, not 20 mm bars with a still uh, strength of 414 megapascal. The column carries a dead load of 800 kilonewton and a live load of 600 kilonewton. The allowable soil bearing pressure is 200 kilopascal. The base of the footing is 1.2 meters below the grade. Assuming weight of soil and concrete to be 16 kilonewton meter cube and 24 kilonewton meter cube respectively, the total depth of the footing is 600 millimeters with concrete cover of 75 millimeters. Okay, mahaba. Okay, na lang magbasa ulit. Okay. So, on question number one, is we investigate the adequacy of the dimension of the footing. So, drawing ko muna yung, prob yung ating problem. Okay? And, and then, so, this prob for this problem pala, we are going to, uh, to discuss only for the uh, actually loaded na uh, column sa footing. And then, ayun, actually loaded. And then, isolated lang siya. Okay? And so, lo drawing ko na. So, ayan na yung ating situation number one. Okay? <clears throat> Ay, cool lang pa pala. So, meron tayong dead load. Which is 800 kN daw. And then, live load of 600 kN. Okay? So, tignan na lang yung given. This is the uh, figure for our problem number one. Okay? Eh, meron tayong 600 millimeters and that ito yung top view niyan okay ito yung top view so ito yung column so column dimension is 400 by 400 400 mm by 400 mm and then 3 meters by 3 meters na squared footing okay so first na tanong is investigate the adequacy okay so kulang pa pala yung ating <coughs> given so true sulat ko na lang dito okay so meron tayong allowable bearing pressure which is 200 kilopascal and then unit weight of soil which is palaking ko lang wait lang UA that is 200 kilopascal and then gamma S that is or the unit weight of soil that is uh, 16 kilonewton per meter cube uh, gamma of concrete that is 24 kilonewton per meter cube uh, F prime C that is 21 mega pascal 
then for fy we have 414 mega pascal and then binigay naman yung area uh, number of bars and the diameter of the bar so as is just the 12 na 20 mm bars and then concrete cover binigay rin that is 75 millimeters so recall lang natin okay so when we uh lagay ko lang when we talk about the dimension uh the adequacy of the dimension of the footing ano yung ginagawa natin we compute for the uh, allowable pressure and sana siya ko compare Okay, when we say that our structure is adequate or our footing is adequate, the, again, sa discussion ko kanina, uh, ang allowable natin must always be equal or greater than our actual pressure. Okay, so yun yung gagawin natin for this problem. Okay, so yung allowable natin, so ito na ba yung gagamitin natin for our allowable soil pressure? So, hindi pa. Okay? So, hindi pa yan yung ating gagamitin for allowable soil pressure. So, ang gagamitin natin dyan, ang tanong kasi dyan is, ano pa nga ba ang kaya nitong footing na to? So, itong QA kasi dyan, ayan yung total pressure na. Tama? So, ang, ang tanong kasi is, ano pa yung kayang pressure na itake nung ating footing? Okay? So, meron pa tayong pressure dyan na dalawa. We have the pressure due to the soil and pressure due to the footing or the concrete. Tama ba? So, ayan. So, therefore, etong QA na yan, yan yung total. Siyempre, bababawasin pa natin yan ng uh, pressure due to the soil and pressure due to the footing. Okay? So, therefore, since may bawas yan, yan yung uh, so Q net. Nakamit natin. So, Q net is equal to the Q allowable <coughs> minus the pressure due to the soil okay and then pressure due to the footing okay so q net therefore is equal to so q a that is 200 minus gamma s minigay naman or unit width of uh, soil so since uh, since this is 1.2 and uh, 600 millimeters yung thickness ng footing therefore yung natitira is just uh, 0 0.6 meters lang din so height of soil and then unit weight of concrete that is 24 times height of concrete that is 0 0.6 or thickness of the uh, thickness of the footing okay so q unit therefore is equal to 170 176 kilopascal so this is what we call the net bearing so uh, net soil bearing capacity or the effective soil bearing capacity okay so ito yung ko compare natin for our actual soil pressure and then solving for our actual soil pressure that is only force over area so p times the area of the footing. So, P natin. So, since we are dealing with dimensions pa lang, therefore, we have to use the unfactored loads. Okay? So, DL plus LL all over the area of the footing. Therefore, 800 plus 600 all over the area of the footing, which is 3 by 3. So, ang actual soil pressure natin is equal to 155.56 kilopascal. Okay? So, yan na. So, we compare natin sila. Okay? So, the QE or the Q net or the so effective soil bearing capacity is, so, from looking or from, ayan, uh, looking na. So, 176 is greater than one, uh, our actual soil pressure. Okay, so 176 is greater than 155.56. Okay, so ang ating conclusion dyan, that our, uh, the dimensions of our footing is adequate. So this is our 
answer for number 1. Okay? For our question number 2, determine the wide beam shear stress at ultimate loads. Okay? So, balik lang ako dun. And now, since we are dealing with a modes of failure for wide beam shear, uh, we are going to use the uh, factored loads na. Okay? So, solving muna for PU, that is 1.2 dead load plus 1.6 live load. Okay? So, solving for PU, that is 1.2 times 800 plus 1.6 times 600. So, the a factored load for this uh, problem is 1920 kN. And since there is no moment, ang QU natin or the ultimate soil bearing capacity is just the force over the area. Okay? Force is 1920 all over uh, so, gawin ko ng 1000 to. Okay, so, soil bearing capacity is in megapascal. So, 3, so, saka na. Okay, sige, 3 by 3. 3,000 by 3,000. So, it's in megapascal tayo. Okay? So, ang Q natin is equal to 0. Uh, 0.213 mega pascal okay yan na naman na tayong uh, ultimate soil bearing capacity okay so ayan ayon sa discussion kanina or ayon sa NSAP code provisions so that for wide beam shear the critical section is at the distance from the face of the column so drawing ko muna yung critical section na yan so, ang failure natin for wide beam shear is a D distance and from the face of the column. So, ito yung face ng column. Therefore, meron daw siyang D distance from the face of the column. Okay? So, pag drawing ko yung ayun, try ko muna i-drawing yung isometric view nito para mas lalo natin maintindihan yung concept ng wide beam shear. Okay? So, yan, yan. Okay? So, meron tayong... Ito yung... Ito yung... Uh, ito, this part is... Ito yung mas malaking cut. And then, ito yung smaller section niya. Ito. Itong right side, ito yun. Ito yung left side nito. Ang cut na to. So, ito yung critical section. Ito yung mas malaki. Okay? So, meron tayong... Uh, column load dyan. Or our... Factor load. And then... Of course, meron din tayong... Natawag na... Uh, Ultimate soil bearing pressure. Okay. Lahat yan. Lagyan ko lang. Okay. Ito yung QU. So, under the assumption natin for wide beam shear. Okay. So, ang left side is itutulak niya yung ating so yung ah, ah, left side is itutulak nung PU yung ating column pababa. And then, for the right side itutulak naman nung ating uh, soil be uh, soil bearing pressure ang ating footing pataas. So, meron tayong shearing uh, action na nangyayari. Okay? Okay? Since we are dealing with st stresses, so, shear stress in particular, so, yung uh, pag-solve lang dyan, since ang stress is just equal to, so, shear stress is just equal to the shearing force all over the shearing area. Okay? So, yung... So, this, so sa this part na to, we can consider this section or this section. So, since makikita nyo naman that uh, ang most convenient na section is this right section. Okay? So, meron tayong force dyan. Okay? So, same lang din kapag kinonsider kin natin ng right section na yan, we can solve, uh, still, st uh, still solve for the shearing stress since uh, our section is just equilibrium. Okay? So, solving for the wide beam shear stress, again, that is only just 
the shearing force all over the sh uh, shearing area. Okay? So, be careful sa, be careful sa mga tanong kasi uh, since sa problem, ang tinanong lang naman dyan is, so balikan natin, ang tanong lang naman dyan is we have determine the wide beam shear stress at ultimate loads. So, kapag sinabing wide beam shear stress at ultimate loads lang, is we, uh, ang pinapahanap sa atin is the nominal stress. Okay? So, kapag sinabing ultimate wide beam shear, so, doon lang tayo gagamit ng uh, ultimate stress. Yes, okay? So, kapag sinabi kong nominal, di ba ang nominal? So, babalik lang sana sa figure. So, ang hinahanap daw pala natin dito is nominal na shearing stress. So, kapag nominal, kailangan lang natin i- Divide siya sa strength reduction factor natin. Bakit? Kasi, ang ating, uh, so, considering the bending moment, ha, di ba, MU or the ultimate uh, moment is just the strength reduction factor times our mo, uh, nominal. Okay? So, kapag ginawa nating nominal yan, we only divide our ultimate over our strength reduction factor. So, since, Uh, nominal yan, we divide lang okay? uh, uh, from the ultimate uh, stress okay? so ito na yan so ano nga ba yung shearing area natin okay? so ang shearing area is the area which in mag slide kapag gumalaw yung ating section, so saan ba yan so, definitely gawa ko ng kulay para mas maganda mm -hmm. Then, definitely yan yung ating shearing area okay so sa part na uh, sa part din na to espera din tayong shearing area to dito sa right side so therefore uh, d and then yung kanyang ayan so yan yung area na hanapin natin okay so <clears throat> solving for vu muna so vu so ang ating shearing area din is ito And then we know that the uh, shearing area is just equal to the stress times the area. Okay? So uh, shearing, uh, shearing force is just equal to, so force is just equal to stress times area. So sa right, uh, right side naman dyan, kung mapapansin nyo, we have a shearing stress na QU. So therefore, it is, ang shearing force natin is just QU times the area nitong section natin na yan. Okay? So, QU times the area. Okay? So, before we uh, so solving for this area, so, D times yung length ng part nito. Tama ba? Okay? So, first is we have to uh, get our D or our effective depth. Okay? So, how do we get that? So, first is Uh, okay lang ba na i-zoom in ko muna to Okay? Magka-cut ko yan. Tapos i-zoom in ko. So, ito na yan. Okay? First is we have the height of the concrete or the thickness of the uh, footing. Okay? Ayan. So, how do we solve for the effective depth? So, from uh, sa, uh, as we can see, there are, that there is a uh, that there is two effective depth for this uh Thickness, uh, footing. Tama ba? We have the effective depth. Okay. Effective depth sa bottom, uh, bottom bars. And then, effective depth also for our top bars. Okay? Meron tayong effective depth. And then, of course, meron tayong and then meron tayong tinatawag na concrete cover. Okay. So, do we, so uh, anong kukunin natin effective depth dyan? So, for the squared footing, okay, ang gagamitin natin effective depth for wide beam shear is yung mas maliit na effective depth. So, yung kukunin natin effective depth is from the top parts. Kasi kapag inanalyze natin yung mas maliit na effective depth, therefore, kapag ginamitan natin ng mas mataas na effective depth at pumasa sa mas maliit na effective depth, ay papasa rin yung ating uh, larger effective depth. Okay, so when we compute for the effective depth, that is only the height of the concrete 
minus the concrete cover and then minus so since ang bars natin main reinforcement natin is same lang naman yan therefore uh, isang uh, isang bar and then kalahati ng top bar so therefore that is 1.5 of the diameter of our bar okay so effective depth is equal to so height of concrete or thickness of concrete that is 600 mm and then the concrete cover that is 75 mm and then 1.5 so ang diameter ng bar natin sa given is 20 mm so therefore ang ating effective depth is equal to 495 millimeters Okay. So when we solve for uh, VU naman So mapili natin mas solve yung VU na okay? So VU is equal to QU So QU natin na na-solve natin is the 0 0.213 megapascal 0 0.213 megapascal times area which is itong area na itong hinahanap natin ito, itong area na ito okay ito, ito, ito. same lang to sa area na ito, diba? ito yan tama ba? yan yan, okay malik pa ang itong, itong pagkagawa ayan yung area na yan, okay so how do we get the area of this uh, part section, okay so we have the B or the uh, width of the footing that is only 3 meters lang, okay? So, VU is just equal to QU times B times, so yung length niya, which is ito, ano yung length niyan? So, we know naman that the length of this is uh, B all over 2, diba? Kalahati ng uh, B. And then, itong part na to is kalahati ng column natin. Therefore, we can make use of this as so kalahati ng b over 2 minus c all over 2 and then minus our effective depth or that is only equal to kapag sinimplify mo natin b minus c over 2 minus d so yan yun yung length niya so p times b minus c all over 2 minus d so <clears throat> Yan, pwede natin ilagay. Bulay ko na itong megapascal. So, megapascal na ito. And then, B, ang base natin is uh, 3 meters or 3,000 millimeters. And then, 3,000 minus ang dimension ng ating column is 400 mm by 400 mm minus 2 minus yung ating effective depth na 495 millimeters. Okay? So, therefore, ang VU natin must be equal to 515.19 times 10 raised to 3 newton. Okay? Ngayon, okay. masasob natin yung VC or wide beam shear stress that is 515.19 times 10 raised to 3 newtons all over <clears throat> so ang ang strength reduction factor first uh, for shear that is 0 0.75 times yung B natin. So, ang B natin is from this line. So, ang B natin is ito. Tama ba? Okay. So, B is just 3,000 millimeters and then effective depth that is 495 millimeters. Therefore, uh, our uh, shear stress is equal to, also, wide, wide beam shear stress is equal to that is equal to 0.463 mega pascal so this is our answer for question number two okay wide beam here okay so and so mahaba na tong video na to and ikakat ko na lang for the next problem okay so abangan nyo na lang yung uh, solution for the next problems okay